Good afternoon, Click community, and welcome back to wonderful Orlando, Florida. We're here at Click Connect Power Packed coverage, going to Boost. We've been outside, we've been on the desk. I'm Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host and Cube co-founder, John Furrier. John, you just had a power packed little We set. had the AI, AI uh, Council on, Click's AI Council. The brain power was off the charts. They're really thinking about the future from a pragmatic perspective, but also not throwing away the baby with the bathwater, as they say, and thinking about innovation. You got to have careful mm -hmm. progress at the same time. We want to go as fast as we can, right? So, love scaling AI. That's the big conversation here is how to set the foundations. It's just been a great day, and our next segment was going to be all about that foundation and then scaling up AI for empowering companies. I know, speaking of scaling yeah. AI, let's, let's welcome Mary and Nick to the stage. Hello, thank, thank you both for being Hello. here. Thank you. Great to be here. You are Good just oozing smiles and energy right now, Nick. I got to <laughs> tell you, how's your day going? How can you not? I mean, what an amazing way to start. The keynote was fantastic, the demos, uh, you know, to see, you know, come from paper to product, you know, so quickly. And then I was just at the executive advisory board uh, where I serve on the board. and to hear uh, people around the table around the, the amazing things that they're doing with analytics and AI, uh, how could you not be energized? Love to hear it. Mary, speaking of, a keynote talked a lot about analytics. You right. have a lot to do with that. Can you give us a little recap? Uh, sure, so I mean, uh, really a fantastic event for us and experience. So from an analytics perspective, we're really focused on um, enabling you know, the 80% of business users in an organization to be able to make better decisions through analytics and AI. So it's really about ease of use, right? Um, making all of our tools easier to use, easier to get the insights when you need them. Um, so today we had a lot of uh, enhancements that we announced regarding augmenting our core analytic solutions with AI automation. We're doing a lot with natural language generation right now. Um, we're doing that on the AutoML side as well in terms of continuing to automate and optimize model selections for predictive AI. And of course, a really big announcement which we're super excited about uh, is Click Answers, which is actually uh, using generative AI to get answers from enterprises' unstructured content, which is actually the majority of content that enterprises yeah. have, so we're super excited. You know, I, I've just been out talking to a lot of your customers and doing a, a, a few segments away from the news desk. Everyone brought up Click Answers as something they were super excited about. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we've heard, I mean, um, it's been really interesting. I think uh, I've just been with Click for about a year, so this is my first time introducing a new product with Click. Um, and so it's been really great. We've rapidly have put this together, really accelerated that with our acquisition of Kindy in uh, January, and we've been, um, I guess that's a dirty little secret, right? We've been like briefing analysts and influencers on, on Click Answers for a while now, and the feedback has been really tremendous. The potential is definitely yeah. there, so we're really excited to bring that to market, um, which will be next month, so um, yeah, it's it really change. It really, cha it, it really highlights the changing of the guard, if you will, from the old AI machine learning to the new generative AI, because back in the day, it was ask good questions. Now it's you have answers. So like, it really kind of flips the script. This is the era we're in. Can you guys share what else is getting flipped upside down? What else is happening? Obviously speed, you mentioned speed of solutions. Yeah. What else is going on that's different now? What's different? Well, I was going to say, on the generative piece, I'd love to hear from Nick, because you guys were actually ahead of the game, right? When generative AI was coming out last year, and you guys have been a fantastic partner to us. You, we've worked together for a long time in analytics and AI, and when it came out, you, you really thought, this. we've got so much data with Click, this is a great opportunity for us. Tell us a little bit about what you did. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's amazing. You could be ahead one day and then behind the next. So. Yeah. We're, we're trying to stay ahead uh, very rapidly and the partnership with Click has really helped us do that. I think uh, you know, fundamentally we, we really have built out some robust use cases. We're, we've been a Click partner for a long time, so getting the data right was always the first foundational element, so really having great governance and master data. Having an organization that's trained and talented, both from the business side as well as the digital side, is really important. So the combination of really focusing on data, training the users in the right way, and then democratizing and providing a self-serve model through you know, our, our, our platform was great. So everyone in the company, uh, all 30,000 employees who are building these personalized connected experiences for the enterprise and for our products, 
they have it at the, the touch of their fingertips. So they're already custom to kind of the power of click and the visualization and all of the analytics that helped us get through the pandemic, helped us get through the supply chain crisis. You know, every part of the enterprise, whether it's sales, finance, marketing, supply chain, has that DNA in, you know, in them around how do I use this, in, you know, this data to deliver better insights. Now, what we've done with our digital transformation solutions business, which is our third business, we have an automotive business and a consumer business, but we also have a global tech services business. We've built capabilities around algorithms and machine learning to embed into the analytics dashboards nice. this prompt engineering capability where you can ask the AI to tell you what they see in addition to, so it's really an augmentation that we love and it drives even greater insights for those who really understand the data, really have the domain knowledge, having that power of not only the static dashboards, but now the interaction around augmented AI is fantastic for Nick, us. How has that changed the culture in the company? Because one of the themes that's coming out of the generative AI use cases, it frees up more time to do other things, yeah. Yeah. creativity. So how has that changed any kind of, well, I say entrepreneurial spirit, product experimentation, what net effect came out of embedding in some of the AI features into the, into the product? Yeah, I think first and foremost, it, it put us in a position where we felt like we can manage AI governance and put the guardrails and guidelines around AI in terms of protecting our intellectual property or data privacy uh, without compromising speed of innovation. So first and foremost, we wanted to make sure that the, uh, the versions that we're using are in the enterprise, they're using our data, it's protected, uh, it's controlled, it help, we help manage the hallucinations and biases. So first and foremost is everyone understands the policies and the procedures and we put guardrails and guidelines around the use of it. So people don't feel like we're using it as a barrier, but helping them set it up correctly. The second is, you know, certainly we have deep domain knowledge around AI and analytics. We have data scientists, data modelers, data engineers. Uh, our chief product officer in DTS is uh, ha is is a, an absolute digital thought leader. So having access to those people yeah. to help you set up the algorithms and the tuning and the explainability of the models yeah. is really powerful. So you don't feel like you're ever slowing down. You have the analytics, you have the experts, you have training. So we have very robust curriculums and training online, videos, sandboxes that you can play around with. So it helps manage that demand, that insatiable yeah. demand. <laughs> uh, lastly, it's managing kind of and prioritizing the use cases. So what we do is everything is intended with a very clear outcome. What's, you know, making sure that we have, for the most part, starting out with low level of effort, high impact use cases that are embedded in these analytics. How do we improve our marketing effectiveness on campaigns? How do we improve our win rates on, on the pipeline of, of uh, things that we're quoting? How do we improve our supply chain uh, forecasting, it's those things that we've already used analytics for that are really helping us empower and take that to the next level with Gen AI. Right. You know, it's and just, to, oh, I was going to say, just to quickly add on to that, because you had said something about the culture change, and I know that you guys are doing some predictive AI. Yeah. And, I mean, it's really not just about making um, your employees and your organizations more productive, but more, like effective and increasing your performance. And it's such a game changer. Like I'm in marketing myself, so I mean, talk about a data rich function and it's really hard to still get the answers you need to make yeah. the decisions to, that you need to make to go forward. Um, and so being able to change that from hunting and kind of getting an insight and guessing what you should do to actually getting a real prediction yeah. of what's likely going to happen, it just really not only improves your productivity but your effectiveness, yeah. your ability to make better decisions. And I think um, from a performance perspective, it's really um, fulfilling as an individual as well as your an organization to too. drive your yeah. performance. So it really does change a lot in terms of mm -hmm. how the company operates. No question, I think you know anyone that thinks that you're going to take the human out of the loop is, is really not looking at it the right way. I mean, yeah. we are building human-centric solutions yeah. mm -hmm. that transform and improves lives. You can't take the human out of that equation. You have to have the right domain expertise that help making it the, the right decisions. And people that are living and working in the data all day long, they'll know when the, the data is wrong. They'll know when the algorithm is wrong. That validation, authentication is really important. So we're building it with the human at the center of the loop. Uh, and it's helping that person do their jobs better, not replacing them. And I think that is really the win-win equation. I think, that I think that's at. the key point. I mean, Savannah and I were at another event this past year where it was about chatbots. 
the mm. old day. Oh, chatbots, no, it's, <coughs> now it's agents are now coming in. Mm -hmm. Agent technology is essentially the automation of tasks for humans, yep. not right. to replace humans. So we're moving to the world of, okay, I see the chatbot-like thing. Okay, now we got intelligence coming in. If your data is ready, you are in good position to yeah. leverage uh, that, and that's your point, Mary. We heard that at the AI uh, yeah. Council. Car goes faster with brakes. Yeah. You know, so it's a truly it's a it's very interesting because I think um, you know we were just talking about how a generative AI really did captivate our imaginations, and from an enterprise perspective, um, how that can help us um, make better decisions, how that can help us be more um, productive and effective. But to implement those AI or analytics models, those are all trained with data, and they all use data um, pretty voraciously <laughs> to get those answers. And so um, it's also driven a resurgence into the fact, like, do I have yeah. um, a good data foundation that I can yeah. use to build all these things on? So I think it's a really important inflection point that organizations are really looking at, do they have? And yeah. with um, AI, it's got to be trusted data, right? There's a lot of risk when it comes to analytics and AI, and so it's got to be trusted. You got to know where it comes mm -hmm. from. You want to know that the quality controls are in place, and you want to know that it's being governed. Not just anybody is touching yeah, it, yeah. right? The few people that you trust to do it. So, um, a really important inflection point on data. It really, it, it absolutely is. I, I, I liked your analogy a second ago. You said it's like a shot in the arm for artificial yeah. intelligence. <laughs> you know, artificial intelligence ML has been around for 30 years for plus, more than that. Yeah. And here we are, all of a sudden, all talking about it. Oh. Was Click anticipating this moment? You know, uh, okay, I've only been here in the last year, um, but I can say I joined Click because I am so excited where the analytics market is, and I have been in analytics, data science, AI, and data for um, more than 15 years, so a little bit longer than I care to um, admit, but there's been so many challenges with it yeah. from the data perspective, um, getting access to the data, to the right data, it's got to be of high quality, it's got to be timely that you're running your analytics on it, and then if you do run your analytics on it, that data literacy, like that is yeah. a beautiful chart. What is it telling me? Like what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Um, and so, when I, I joined Click, because I looked at their portfolio, I'm like, they've got it all. Yeah, they've got it all. They, they really are in a great position to solve all those challenges, and that's probably something you'd hear from a tech marketer to say, I joined a company because I thought they had really good tech. Um, but I mean, if you look over the course, they, um, good loyal customers they really too. were yeah. building for it, you know, with all the automation, the natural language, oh. the building up on the data side. So I think, yeah, it's nicely positioned. It yeah. is nicely positioned. You know, John, you just mentioned the customer retention rate. You know, I learned in one of my interviews earlier today, 93% customer retention. That is insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that is like more than kids in the candy bar. That is like, that is a, a very, very, very impressive. I think part of it too is, and having been a customer for a long time. I was time, literally just going to ask you, <laughs> what is like in your shoes? Okay, I was, Go for it. I was just about to say, you know, uh, Mike has been in my chair. He was a CIO uh, for a large company, knew the importance of data, and yeah. when you have a CEO of a company who really understands it from the customer's point of view, he's sat in that chair to look through those lenses, it makes a huge difference in terms of what the roadmap and where the company is going. And you can tell, you know, he's been there before. And so, um, you know, we, we say a lot uh, in, in our organization, you can't do the brilliant without the basics. And getting mm -hmm. your foundational models right, getting your data governance right, getting your integration, aggregation, visualization, all right, if you really want to take advantage of the power of applied and generative AI, you have to have all that fundamental foundational elements in place. You know, the days where you generate a report, never, no one liked the report, and then they said, well, just do another report, they still didn't like the, the answers that they got. That's fundamentally the yeah. same way today. And I think you have to be really careful also in these public large language models as well to make sure that you have the right guardrails and, and guidelines. Yeah. The tuning is really Critical. important, the, the observability is really important, yeah. the domain knowledge is important, the explainability and how it works is really important. So, um, you know, we yeah. worry of course about data poisoning as well, it's real. So, yeah. understanding that data lineage, and this is why I like the, the Click product a lot too, the data lineage is incredibly important, it's going to continue to be really important whether you're using publicly large language models or small language models in the private enterprise, we're always thinking about that and you know, and yeah. it, we don't, the last thing we want to do is 
build uh, uh, an algorithm like <laughs> our Health GPT app, which yeah. we've launched for healthcare and life sciences, yeah. you want that patient provider interaction and diagnosis. You want accuracy, right? You want to make sure that it's you right. You need it. Yeah. Having domain yeah. knowledge yeah. and yeah. explainability yeah. is critical, <laughs> right? So you don't want to screw those kinds of things up. So yeah, again, exactly. you, you really have to take it seriously <coughs> and you've got to have the right domain knowledge and the right technology and te techniques in place. You know, place. Nick, you bring up a good point about, um, in fact, we called it out on our intro segment about uh, the first conference we've been to as the, you go to all the conferences. I've never heard on stage in the main keynote, data supply chain, okay, as a, mm. as a concept on stage in mainstream. That means that's uh, not just lineage, that's security. That's looking at the explainability of what's coming to be the most important asset. Data yeah. is now the new product, so Absolutely. great point. Now, Mary, you brought up a good point about the um, things coming together for yes. Click. That's kind of the way the world is right now. You have to get your act together on the data, otherwise you're going to go into the Gen AI world unprepared for hallucinations, which is just gaps in data. So Nick, I got to ask you the question. In addition to like the efficiencies that are going to come with automation and AI, lower cost, maybe some help the human be more productive, there's a business benefit of top line revenue that comes with generation. So it's a, now you've got a double edged sword. So talk about coming together, you've got efficiencies and company gain, business mm -hmm. benefit, um, revenue side. So you've got top and cost, revenue and cost being impacted. What do, how do you guys talk about that internally? You mentioned the, the healthcare app. User experience has got to be perfect. Yeah, it really does. I think uh, part of it for us is you know, starting with the basics. You know, when we look at our commerce data, we've got incredible products online, our mm -hmm. JBL.com platform. Uh, the revenue has grown considerably, and a lot of it is because of our intelligence around the data, understanding the customer data, understanding uh, what the buying <coughs> patterns are, what the top selling SKUs mm -hmm. are, what the channel inventory, the average days on hand are. Customers want available product to be able to be <laughs> delivered to them tomorrow, so being able to have that, personalizing the product, being able to use AI to design the product on the fly and personalize it, all of that's table stakes. Having a VPA that will provide recommended buying. Uh, now you, we're at the point where you can take a picture of your ear and it'll, it'll give a recommendation in terms of what earbud you want to use because it'll fit your ear, that image analysis and generative AI. Again, another example That's a of fun personalization. Use case. Yeah. That is. Fun use case. I mean, yeah. we're thinking of constantly yeah. these use cases around just how do you make the personal, personalized buying experience more, uh, you know, I, I think unique, um, mm -hmm. more immersive. Uh, again, when you drive in our vehicles, with our software-defined vehicle, all of the advanced software and generative AI and personalization in the vehicle is pretty remarkable. When you look at our smart audio yeah. uh, technology and, again, personalized experiences around what you like to listen to and how that may affect your mood or how the mood affects what you pick in terms of your playlist, <laughs> et cetera. It's so many really cool things that are coming out and happening across the, the entire company yeah. um, and how that connected experience, and again, we've got 30,000 people, connected experiences in the car, in the home, on the go, and in the workplace, yeah. providing that ubiquitous, generative, personalized experience yeah. across all of that ecosystem is going to be really exciting. A lot of unstructured wow. data coming in for you guys, too. Absolutely. So, take, so share, the, share with the audience watching, people have to lean into this wave, otherwise it's pretty clear yeah. there's going to be two sides of history here. You're getting the wrong side of history or the right side of history. Generally, it's, it's a no-brainer. Everyone pretty much gets it the playbook, how do you get the prerequisites? Can you share your success story, what you've done to gather these benefits? What Someone watching now, they, they know they're in health, they're taking baby steps, they're putting their toe in the water, they get their yeah, little floaty you know, on, they're in the sure, low end sure, of the pool. Sure. You, know, you know, I think it's early days, first and foremost, let me just say that. We think about four fundamental aspects of success. First is the governance model. You've got to get the governance model right. And that is how you're going to manage your the data, privacy, intellectual property, get that governance right, manage the demand coming in. How do you control the cost? You know, we remember the days of cloud where you see significant costs, lots of instances getting spun up and a lot of vulnerabilities in the products. We don't want to make that same mistake. So putting the guardrails and guidelines around cost, optimization, uh, demand optimization, and then prioritization of use cases. What's the small, low level effort, high impact stuff that you can start doing proof of concepts with and kind of testing the water. So, how do you make sure that those are the use cases that'll bring you the best benefit at the lowest cost mm -hmm. and start getting you acclimated yeah. to it? The third is you know, picking the right partnerships. You've got to pick technology partners like Click who understand the fundamental points of view from the customer, 
what other customers are gleaning value from those use cases and the product usage, and then being able to apply that. I, I, I certainly learn a lot from everybody around me. Yeah. The only reason why I've been in my role is because I've just been smart enough to surround myself with great people. So the partnerships matter. Yeah. Um, so the partnerships in the tech stack. You know, understanding that the tech stack will continue to evolve, every part of the tech stack's going to evolve, and so being able to build out small proof of concepts, try out different products, uh, making a determination on whether you want to build or buy, it's still early days to get figure that out. Get that winning out. culture, yeah. get the wins, the quick wins, the yep. little wins. Absolutely. Get on right. base, little small balls we say in baseball, you know, get the little singles and then hit the home runs. Right. And, at and the you don't end. expect failure. You know? At the end of the day, you know, right now, you're going to learn how to, what success looks like yeah. and what failure yeah. is. It's very early days. Uh, personally, we're, we're doing things that are big and small alike, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's very early days and you know, having that, yeah. that, uh, that entrepreneurial spirit with the expectation yeah. that some things aren't going to always go right, but being able to contain and control and manage through that is really important. Mm -hmm. What? All about that curiosity, yeah, go Oh, ahead, I was just going to say, and what I loved about that, because I agree, it's not whether you're going to adopt AI, it's whether or not you can do it effectively. Mm -hmm. And so, we do see a lot of companies that are, are being cautious yep. around this, right? They want to make sure that they are really thinking through the governance, the security implications, or thinking through the data implications. But, you know, coming from analytics and AI, near and dear to my heart, what I loved what you said is really focused on the business. I think a lot of people are like, how can we adopt this new technology? How can we have an AI strategy? And it's really about how can you have a business strategy that's enabled by AI and kind of flipping it. And everything you talk to from a use case per perspective is very much business driven in terms of how it's going to advance your business, your customer success, and using that as a point of innovation of how can we take those experiences even further to delight our customers, I think is really excellent. Great, and you know, I think one of the things that are unique about my role as a CDIO, I get to try it and see what works and what doesn't work as a reference point with Harman and Samsung, but then based on that, we're able to go do that for other customers with Click as well. So we've served industrial, healthcare, communication, software companies on their journey around analytics and AI based on our knowledge and experience that we've applied in-house. And so I have my cake and can eat it too, I'm the CDIO, <laughs> but also the president of the P&L. And so it's a lot of fun. Um, people can learn from our success and our failures and, and that makes my life a, a lot more interesting and fun. I love that attitude and I love yeah. that transparency and I love that I can actually say, I think with confidence, you're the first person on the stage who said they can have their cake and eat it too. Absolutely. <laughs> so congratulations <laughs> on that Why one. Not that is, that Why is, not? That is absolutely lovely. Nick, Mary, this has been a thrilling conversation. Oh, thank you both. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, thank you so much for thank having us. We just settled in and started learning here. I felt John and I both just kind of take in all you had to say and that was, that was exciting. And scaling AI on the top of everybody's minds right now. Thank all of you for tuning in for this absolutely fascinating segment here on Scaling AI. John and I are at Click Connect. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news. <laughs>